Hello and welcome. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to share with you guys my top 10 tips and tricks for getting your hair to hold curl and getting that curl to last. I recently did a full review on the Dyson Airwrap and a lot of the questions that I got in the comments were pertaining to do the curls last? How do I get the curls to actually stay in my hair? And my hair naturally holds curl really well because my hair is naturally curly, but I have so many friends and family members who don't have the same hair texture as mine and they just have the hardest time getting curls to hold. So over the years, I've kind of picked up a few tips to help get that curl to stay because there's nothing worse than spending time curling your hair and then it just falls down 10 minutes later. Now, a few of these tips are gonna be specific to the air wrap, but the majority of them will work whether you're using the air wrap or a just traditional curling iron or curling wand. So by no means do you have to have an air wrap to get something out of these tips. You can definitely use most of them with any heat styling tool you're using to get curls. Now, before we get into the meat of this video, it would mean oh so much to me if you would hit that subscribe button. It makes me really happy inside of my heart. It'll make you happy and it'll give you the chance to enter my monthly giveaway. All right, let's get into it. So my first tip is make sure you are using a heat protectant. It is so important. I know it's super annoying to hear. I, for years, was one of those people that like, I just didn't want to hear it. I think because I have such fine hair, I have to be really particular about the products that I use. So trust me, any product I recommend is not going to weigh fine hair down because I feel your pain. I've been there. <laughs> this is my favorite heat protectant. It is the Hairdresser's Invisible Oil from Bumble and Bumble. This is such a good heat protectant. I use this anytime I heat style my hair. It has a nice, light, like, hair care, smell good scent to it. It's not too overwhelming, not too perfumey, and it is a really nice heat protector. It'll protect your hair from getting too damaged with the heat. It's also gonna help kind of tame flyaways, especially if you have fine hair like I do. Flyaways are just a very real part of life, so this really helps with that, and a heat protectant as annoying as it is to hear, or maybe it's just me that finds it annoying. It really is something that you should be using. So this one is my favorite, but they have them in the drugstore. I mean, you can get heat protectors at any kind of price point that you're looking at. This is just the one that I like to use. So my second tip is to use a wave spray or a mousse. I know, another product. But here's the thing, if your hair has a hard time holding curl, kind of the issue there tends to be that your hair just doesn't have like the memory. I don't know why they call it that, but that's what it's called. It doesn't have like the memory to hold a curl. For example, if you have fine straight hair, you probably have a hard time getting your hair to hold a curl. And the reason why is that your hair just doesn't have the memory for that. It doesn't have the texture for that. So what you need to do is put in a product that's gonna help your hair kind of memorize the pattern that you're putting into it with the heat, whether that's your curling iron or your Dyson. Now the product that I recommend for this, or like if I'm doing, for example, my brother, his girlfriend has very long, very fine, naturally straight hair. If I'm gonna curl her hair, the product that I always use for this step is this Away Hair Care Wave Spray. It is such a good spray. It really, like if you have fine straight hair, this is really gonna help your hair kind of get like that little bit of grit. That sounds so weird to say, but it's not like a bad grit. It's just like a little bit of a texture that's gonna then help your straight hair memorize that curl so that it holds the curl or the wave a little bit better. So this is the one that I really, really like. You can also try using a mousse. There's a really good one from Tresemme that doesn't make your hair crunchy or anything like that. I don't have a bottle here, so I will put it on the screen and down in the description box below. So either using the mousse or a wave spray like this one from Away, that's gonna really help your hair just get the kind of memory it needs to memorize the curl and hold that curl a little bit longer. So my next tip is to start your curl near the root rather than start at the end. I'm going to demonstrate this using the air wrap, but like I said, you can use this with a curling iron curling wand. The technique is gonna be the same. So rather than starting down here with the curl and then wrapping up, like a traditional curl, the way I think we're kind of normally taught, my suggestion is to start at the base and then wrap around. Now, if you want a wave, you would leave your end out. If you want like a traditional curl, you'll put your wave around. And again, you can use this technique with the air wrap like I'm doing today. 
although I'm not, I don't have it on. I'm just showing you the technique. <laughs> or you can use a traditional curling wand or curling iron and you would get the same result. Now, starting at the root rather than starting at the end is gonna put the bulk of your wave and your curl up higher, closer towards the root and into your mid shafts rather than putting the weight and the bulk of the curl at the end of your hair. When you have like the bulk of your curl starting at the end, number one, your ends need the least amount of heat, okay? So it doesn't actually even make sense to start at the end because they don't need that much heat. But number two, when you put the bulk further down, it can kind of weight the curl down or the wave. So starting up here at the root is gonna make sure that the weight of the curl is up here and that's gonna help prevent your curls from kind of getting weighed down and loosening up a lot faster. My next tip is make sure you curl the curl down before you let go of it. So if you're using the air wrap, make sure you're using the cool shot button while your hair is curled or waved on here. Make sure you actually use it. The, <laughs> there is definitely a purpose for the cool shot button. So make sure you use it because cooling that curl down is gonna help it hold better. Now, if you're using a curling iron or a curling wand, you you're not gonna have cool shot, obviously, but you can either hold the curl. Once you've done the curl, you can either hold it until it cools down, or say you've got like a curl, you've just curling ironed it, you've got the curl, you can actually kind of just pin it up. I like to use these little clips from Amazon. Again, I'll link them below because they don't leave creases. So if I like want ringlet curls and I want them to hold a really long time, I'm using a curling iron, I will pin all of my curls up using these little clips and then I will just let them sit there until they're like cold. <laughs> and that just keeps them to hold a lot longer. So curling the curl down in the state that you want the curl is super important and it's really gonna go a long way in getting your curls to last longer. My next tip is use a smaller barrel. So if you're using the air wrap, try using the 1.2 inch barrel. Or if you're using a traditional curling iron, I prefer to use like a one and quarter inch curling iron because it's gonna fall a bit. So, you know, if you start with the, you know, if you're someone who wants bigger curls and you start with that bigger barrel, when they fall, they're just gonna kind of be straight. Um, knowing that your curl is gonna fall a little bit, it makes sense to kind of go with a smaller diameter of barrel and a tighter curl because it is gonna fall a little bit. Even if your hair, I mean, my hair falls a little bit, even though it holds curl really well, it still falls a little bit. So I'll use a one and a quarter inch barrel or this 1.2 inch barrel on the air wrap. My curl will fall a little bit, but it'll be the exact kind of pattern that I want it to be. So using a barrel that is smaller in diameter it's just gonna help you so that when your curl does fall a little bit it still is defined my next step is make sure your sections match the width of the barrel you're using so if you are using for example this is the 1.2 inch barrel on the Dyson air wrap your sections should never be any wider than the barrel that you're using this is a 1.2 inch so my sections should always be about the width of this barrel Anything more than that is just gonna be too much hair for that barrel and you're gonna end up with a curl that just doesn't have the definition it needs to hold up. Now this rule of thumb applies even to the 1.6 inch. It applies to any size barrel that you're gonna use, whether it's on the air wrap or a regular curling iron. You wanna always make sure that your section is not any wider than the barrel you're using. And I mean that this way, like any wider this way, and also up and down. You know, for example, I wouldn't take a section that's like this. See that, that's too long this way. I would need to kind of cut this in half to make sure that my section both ways is matching up to the barrel that I'm using. Again, it's just, if you put too much hair in that barrel, you're not gonna get the curl definition you need for that curl to really like hold in place. My next tip is more of a warning and that warning is, Please do not brush your curls out with a brush. When you brush the curls out, you break up that curl and you're gonna lose any definition that makes it look like a curl. I mean, curls are curls. I mean, these are waves in my hair, but you see how there's, you know, little pieces of hair that are basically in the same pattern. And that's how you have an actual like curl rather than just like a brushed out kind of little bit of a wave to your hair. So if you're wanting actual like curls and you're wanting your hair to look curly, 
you're gonna need to have a little bit of definition to the curls. Brushing them out is gonna completely break those bonds that you just put in with the curling iron and it's just not a good idea. Now, once you do your curls, I know they're gonna look PC and not integrated if you don't do something. So rather than brush, you can just go in with your fingers, kind of pull them apart, toss them up, kind of just move your fingers through them a little bit to make them look a little bit more lived in without breaking down the bonds to the point that they're just gonna completely fall out and you're gonna lose that curl that you worked so hard to get. All right, we're coming down the home stretch. Only three tips left. My next tip is try using a texturizing spray. This is my favorite one. It is from Orbe. It is the dry texturizing spray. What I like to do is kind of go in and spray this like up in to the waves or the curls, whatever it is I'm using. The great thing about texturizing spray is it's really gonna help your hair hold the overall style. So when you're doing waves and curls, you have all this body and the structure and the texture spray is gonna help your hair hold on to that body and that texture. So it can really help extend the life of your curls. And again, it works very similar to the wave spray or the mousse that you can use when your hair is damp. It just gives your hair a little bit more grit so it can kind of memorize that curl a little bit better. All right, next up, make sure you use a hairspray and make sure you use that hairspray properly. So this is my favorite hairspray to use. It's the Moroccan oil. I get the medium finish. It's really nice and flexible. It doesn't leave a lot of residue. It's not sticky and it holds, but it still doesn't, you know, it doesn't make your hair look like a helmet or crunchy or lifeless where it's just like stuck in one place. Now, the best way to use hairspray for your curls is to make sure you're spraying up into the root, into the mid shaft. You don't really wanna be spraying like here on the ends or spraying up top and weighing the curl down. You wanna spray up into the hair, kind of like so. Mm, it smells really good. <laughs> Very similar to how you don't want the base of the curl to be down at the end, you don't wanna be putting a lot of weight on the ends of your hair. You wanna make sure you're putting that weight more towards the root, towards the base of your actual hair. That way it's not gonna be weighing everything down, but it's still gonna help give you that hold. And if you're thinking, well, don't I want hairspray on the ends of my hair? You do, but I promise spraying up in there, you're gonna get some hairspray on the ends. And again, your ends are generally the part of your hair that need the least amount of help because they're usually like, Number one, they're usually the thinnest part of our hair because you know our hair breaks off at different points. So usually your ends are gonna have the least amount of volume. So they need the least amount of heat. They need the least amount of product in general. All right, so I saved what I think is the most important and best tip for last, and that is make sure you get regular haircuts. Your haircut is so important to getting your curls to last. So damage and split ends are really gonna affect your hair's ability to curl and hold a curl. I promise you, number one, even for me, like my hair curls so much better and holds so much better after I have a fresh trim. Also, you need to have some type of layer in your hair for curls, to be honest, because if your hair is all one length and it's very weighty, if you're someone who, you know, like me, you have a lot of hair, it may be fine, but you have a lot of it. When you don't have any kind of haircut to it or any kind of shape to your haircut, all of your curls are gonna be falling in the same place and it's gonna to be too heavy. Your hair's just gonna to be too heavy and gonna pull them down. You can see, for example, in my hair, like I have different layers. I don't have a ton of layers. So even if you're someone who's like, oh, I don't really want like a very layered haircut, you don't have to have like a very feathered layered haircut to get some shape out of it. All you need to tell your stylist, whoever's cutting your hair, is that, you know, I don't really love the look of layers, but I just need a little bit of shape so that I can get a curl to hold. They should know how to accomplish that. That's what I have going on in my hair. You'll see, I have different kind of like lengths in there, just barely, but for the most part, all of my hair is one length. It all kind of ends at the same place, but there's a little bit of shape and life to my haircut and that helps the curls look nicer or in this case I, I have beachy waves today but you know what I'm talking about I'm gonna use my brother's girlfriend as another example here she has very long very fine hair like mine but she has so much of it it is so thick and when her hair is all one length and she has no like layer into it no shape cut into it 
it is like impossible to get a curl to hold on her hair, even if I use all the other tips that I talked about in this video, just because if your hair is all one length and very weighty, what's gonna happen is all those curls are falling at the same place and they're there together and there's too much weight. It's just gonna, gravity's gonna happen. It's gonna pull all that curl down and you're not gonna get the bounce and the life out of curl that you're probably looking for. Moral of the story, get you a good haircut. It's kind of funny because so many of these tips are things that I used to be so resistant to. I never used to like products in my hair because my hair is very fine. And so not all products work on my hair. Some weigh them down or just don't work for them. And I used to hate getting haircuts. I used to, every time my stylist would ask me, are we going to trim today? I'd be like, no, not this time. Didn't we trim last time? And she's like, no, you didn't get a trim last time. <laughs> I know. I know it can be a pain, but I promise that these tips really, really do help. So I hope this video has helped you out. Let me know in the comments below if you try any of these tips or tricks. I hope that they will be of help to you and I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, you take care of yourself. Bye.